Hey guys, and welcome into this video. My name is Ben Lee, and today here I've got my Sork leveling guide for you. I've got everything laid out step by step. This is something that we've been working on on my stream because I've been doing loads of Sork theory crafting on there at twitch.tv forward slash Benley underscore TV. So if you fancy checking out some more, feel free to give me a follow there. Um, but yeah, I feel like we have a very, very strong lightning leveling build. I feel like lightning is much faster than ice, for example, for leveling and even fire. There's too many nice things that you can get um, kind of early on as well, even with like mana regen things on lightning sword. And arc lash is just way better than any of the other like basic skills your generate is to be able to just smash through so if you're looking for something that's really efficient and really nice and balanced for good defense as well as offense then i feel like this is going to be the build for you so let's get started here um the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a point in our clash and we're going to get the enhanced our clash if you critically strike then you get an extra um extra attack very nice because we are going to be just randomly critically striking even though low chance at the start all right then from here we're going to be taking chain lightning enhanced chain lightning and greater chain lightning this skill out of all of the um the core skills chain lightning is just way better i find fireball is is okay i think ice shards with like the pierce um is quite good and with the uh like vulnerable here then it can be quite strong um frozen orb and charge bolts i don't think these are very good for leveling and incinerate no so we're going to pick this up in chain lightning and then we're going to come back up here the move speed is going to be very very nice from here we're going to be taking down coming down to our teleport then we're going to pick up ice armor and then i was a little conflicted on if i wanted to go frost nova or enhanced armor i feel like i want to go straight into enhanced armor because the mana regen is just going to allow us to kill things that little bit faster having a few more uh, opportunities to cast chain lightning rather than just freezing because we're not going to go down to the vulnerability just yet so i feel like this is a stronger and faster way to just go through even though frost nova is a bit more defensive so maybe i would take frost nova first on hardcore but this is what we're going to do we're going to take frost nova here then we're going to come up and we're going to pump our points into chain lightning to max that out until we reach level 15. So at level 15, then we can take our first enchantment. So the first enchantment here I'm going to take is, I think, probably chain lightning, because for me, I'm going to be in a group. So I feel like chain lightning is going to be very good because I am going to be using this exact build for leveling. Now, fireball can be an absolutely fantastic one but we're not really putting points into fireball um i mean if you really wanted to and you really liked it you could end up doing a point in fireball here and then maybe like take it out later on but i feel like just having chain lightning especially for me being in a group is going to be fantastic even though fireball enchantment can be absolutely amazing for clearing trash the thing being with arc clash with its cleave, it's just going to be really good for taking out trash anyway. So I feel like we're going to take the chain lightning because that's going to be way better for bossing, even though potentially you could swap them. Okay, so going from there, we're going to come down and we're going to take enhanced frost nova and then mystical frost nova for the vulnerability, which is very, very strong on demand vulnerability. Uh, and for bosses, it's six seconds. So it's 20% extra damage. Coming over here now. What I really want to take next is Glass Cannon. And in my group, I feel like I might just go straight up for three points in Glass Cannon. However, to keep it a bit more balanced, um, and especially if you're on Hardcore, if you're on Hardcore, I would probably go... Um, see, the next the next one's here, right? We've got Align Elements, Glass Cannon, and Protection. These are definitely the next things I want to take. I feel like for balance, you would go that, that, and then points in Glass Cannon. I feel like for speed running, I want to go glass cannon first. However, for balance sake, we're going to go align the elements, three points in the glass cannon to boost our damage up, and then we're going to take a point of protection. Again, for me in a group, this is what I'm going to do. Coming down from protection, I now I'm going to be taking enhanced teleport and shimmering teleport. This gives you 30% more damage reduction 
and it also gives you cooldown reduced if you teleport into mobs so we're going to have a shield we're also going to build up a bit of damage resistance here so this is a nice bit of defense to kind of offset the glass cannon and also allow us to get uh, lower cooldown teleports from the enhanced teleport from here We've now unlocked the ability to use our ultimate. So I'm going to take unstable currents and go into prime unstable currents. There's no point in taking the supreme because we're not using crackling energy. I don't feel that crackling energy is very good for leveling. This is probably more of an end game one. And I have been theory crafting with crackling energy for late game builds, which I do want to release on the channel. However, we are going to be taking this going up to prime for the extra attack speed. From there, we want to be coming up to the top and we are going to put three points into Arc Lash. And then the next one, we're going to be into Firebolt at level 30. So at level 30, we are going to be taking the enchantment of Firebolt. Now, from this, I have gone up and down over this in my theory crafting sessions. And there are too many strong passives that um proc or work around burning now firebolt direct damage from skills apply burning so arc lash is going to apply burning chain lightning is going to apply burning teleporting in does um damage on arrival that's also going to do burning and then of course our unstable currents is going to do burning so this it's just on everything we don't really care about the damage that it does all that we want to know is that things are burning because from here I'm now going to come back to Arc Clash in a minute to finish that point off. But Fiery Surge is very strong for us for leveling. Killing a burning enemy increases your mana regeneration by 30% once we put the three points into it. Right, for three seconds. So as you're going through, you're just going to get a load of mana regen. It's going to be fantastic. Um, next, we are going to finish off our Arc Lightning. Um, and then we're going to come down to Vyas. Vyas fantastic for increasing the damage of shock skills and 20 percent less damage to us so close enemies and we're going to be close with our arc lash so very strong passive for us the other choices here just don't even come close for what we're going to be doing for our build and we're not doing crackling energy so vias is a bit of a no-brainer from here we are going to take one point into endless pyre and then we're also going to take one point into warmth. Now, warmth gives you health regeneration, which sorks don't really have a lot of. You've got your potion and you've also got the shimmering flame shield. Now, again, if you're on hardcore, maybe you might want to have considered taking flame shield. But I feel like ice armor has a really nice uh six seconds rather than two seconds and the mana is just going to be great and especially again for me group players is fantastic so we're going to take this warmth because there's not a lot of chances and opportunities for sorks to get health regen and at you every one second you heal for x amount of your maximum life for each nearby burning enemy and then it increases on bosses here I only want to put in one point because for me, I want to be putting in more damage even when solo, unless I feel like I'm struggling, I'm going to come back to warmth later and I'm going to move on to coursing currents here. So coursing currents gives us stacking crit chance until we crit, then it resets. So this is quite nice to have, but what I feel like is more balanced and nicer is the electrocution here. So enemies deal 15% less damage for five seconds after being critically struck. Now, as far as I can read from here, the way that this is worded is enemies just deal 15% less damage. It doesn't say 15% less damage, 15 less damage to you. It just says they just deal 15% less damage. So again, in group play, this also offers an opportunity for su supporting your team as well as that. If that's not how it works and it's just for you, then it's still absolutely fantastic. After electrocution, we're going to take the next two points in course and currents to build up that crit chance. Then coming back up, we're going to take devastation into elemental dominance. One point and then three points in here. This is going to give us an extra 9% uh, damage with our core skills when above 50 mana. And with this build, we do have a nice set of mana regen. And we're also from the legendary aspects. We're going to be able to keep our mana up 
So I feel like this is going to be a very nice addition to the build. Coming down, we've got a one point going onto Inner Flames, the four coming down into Devouring Blaze. Now, this one's not going to do anything for us, but using it as a stepping node again, you deal 30% increased critical strike damage against burning enemies. So bosses will take this as well. They will just be burning because of the Firebolt passive. So, well, enchantment. And this is going to increase that damage by 30%. From here, this is when I feel like I'm going to take more points into Warmth. And then come up and take three points into Mana Shield. Before finally finishing off Teleport. Now, I realize I need to put another point in there. So, this is the build that I feel like is going to carry myself and you guys very efficiently through the leveling process from here i feel like we're going to be able to move from using art clash into a more chain lightning focused build towards the late game which is also i really honestly feel like this is going to be very strong but that's another build that i'm going to be releasing and i've already started theory crafting a lot of the stuff around that on my twitch channel again remember i have been doing a lot of that live but before we leave this here i'm going to go through some legendary aspects in the gems because all of these ones here are ones that you can guarantee get through the codex of power so completing a dungeon you can get these so it's not like a random drop chance okay and although i know that we have all of these less listed out and i've filled up every slot for this for leveling it's probably not going to be realistic for you to be able to have every single one of them all the time. Especially on your weapons. On your weapons, you probably won't even have it for very long. If you have it, maybe one or two levels and then you're going to be upgrading your weapons. Your weapons attack power scales your damage significantly. Every time you upgrade your weapon, then you're increasing the base coefficiency of your skills. So you see here it says like 59%. And here is 50%. That percentage is of like your weapon power. So, and that 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 works as like a baseline for all your other multipliers from all of your items. So it's very important to upgrade your weapons a lot. So while I've put them on here in case you did want to farm them up for whatever reason, or maybe even put them on for the Keystone Dungeon at like level 50 to be able to beat that in... If I'm being honest, it's probably just going to be the rings and the necklace that you're going to be able to upkeep. The rest of the stuff, maybe not. So going through these, we've got Aspect of a Protector. Damaging an Elite gives you a barrier. Very nice, strong, defensive one. Basic skills grant 20% damage reduction. That's going to be very nice as well, just for survivability, because you're going to be spamming lots of Arc Clashes. Attacking enemy with basic skills increase the damage of your next core skill. So that's Aspect of Expectant. And then here, Disobedience, you've got Increasing Your Armor. Again, a very nice defensive one. Ghost Walker, this is um, while unstoppable and four seconds after. You gain move speed and can pass through enemies. And um, Teleport gives you unstoppable. So every time you teleport, you're going to gain move speed and be able to freely move through, through targets. Edge Master's one here. Um, skills deal increased damage based on your available mana. And that goes up depending on if you've got more mana, you do more damage. The elementalist aspect, your core or mastery skills cast above 100 mana give you 20 to 40 percent increased critical strike chance. Now that is a massive boost to critical strike chance. Recharging aspect, every, each time chain lightning bounces off you, you gain mana. So very good for single targets and for bosses especially. And then using a cooldown restores mana. These two are very, very, very strong. You could potentially even put these on to your amulet. If you really wanted to get a bit of extra mana back to be able to upkeep but you probably be able to keep a ring for maybe 10 15 20 levels maybe even more before you actually have to or maybe think about replacing them so you could probably put these on and just forget about it for ages and then maybe you know take the aspect and put it on another piece of gear later on so these are going to be very nice and efficient things for you and the last one here, rapid one, is basic attacks. Give you increased attack speed. That goes quite nicely with here. So after you use a basic skill, your next core skill deals damage. But as I said, realistically, you're probably only going to have a few of these at a time when you're leveling because you're going to be changing your gear, especially your weapons. So 
So don't worry about wasting resources on your weapons. This is more of like a perfect scenario. Or if you wanted to get set up for the Keystone Dungeon, if you start to struggle with that and you want to go, I need to be powerful, this is going to give you that power. And then here, Topaz, basic weapon skill damage. You've got rubies for max life and skulls for extra armor. If you find you have slots and you find these, these are also going to be some nice gems for you for leveling. So from this, I really feel like this is going to be a amazing leveling experience for you guys. I'll link everything down below so you can have access to the sheet and you can have access to this so you can do it all yourself. And yeah, if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe for more D4 content. So we've got loads more Sork builds coming. This is going to be the build that I play at launch and I'm going to be following this. And I feel like it's one, very well balanced for defenses, but two is going to give you quick clear speed and do a lot of damage. So let me know what you think about this down below. And until the next one, guys, I'll see you later. Peace out.